things the world charter chooses to do. And uh, the Swiss, the World Bank approved a $732 million financial package for Ukraine and is planning more economic assistance for the coming months. Away from that, to achieve equality for women judges in terms of representation at all levels of the judiciary and on policy-making judicial council. The United Nations certified the 10th of March every year as International Day of Women Judges. The UN believes that the inclusion of the gender perspective is essential to the legitimacy of the judiciary. The day also seeks to remind world leaders and those in positions of authority of the need to evolve measures to promote gender balance in the administration of justice. Talking health, the Nigeria Center of Disease Control, NCDC, has confirmed 84 new cases of COVID-19 in the country. The cases were recorded in five states and the Federal Capital Territory. LCC has 52 cases. Yobe, Kisum, Biofra, three, Abia, two, while Kaduna and Kano have one case each. The 84 new cases bring the total number of confirmed cases to 254,861, while 249,307 have been discharged with 3,142 deaths so far recorded. And those were stories trending on the hour. Thank you for staying with us. My name is Fabia Delivoto. Hello and welcome to you. Thank you for joining us. This is Platform. I'm Ruth Agwe. It is no longer news that women all over the world have proven to be forces to reckon with breaking boundaries and making tremendous impact when given an opportunity to lead. But women have always wanted more beyond what is offered to them on the table. Imagine a gender equal world, a world free of bias, stereotypes and discrimination. A world that is diverse, equitable and inclusive. A world where differences are valued and celebrated. Without gender equality, an equal future remains out of reach. Together, we can force women's equality collectively. We can all break the bias, which is actually um, what the theme of this year's International Women's Day that was recently celebrated says. Gender equality today for a sustainable future tomorrow. Women should be celebrated daily. Their ideas, innovations, and activism that is changing the world for the better. And their leadership across all walks of life. Now, beyond the annual awareness, of ensuring affirmative action for women. Smart action plan has been well implemented to ensure women occupy their right privileges. Of course, the five proposed gender bills and the fifth constitution alteration bills has been the talks of recent, but thankfully there is a reconsideration by the legislature. Our focus on platform today is promoting gender parity and social inclusion for women. And our guest is no other person but the woman in charge of women affairs Dame Pauline Chalon. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister, for joining us on the platform. Thank you very much, Ruth, and happy International Women's Day. I wish you the same. It's the month of women. women. March sure. is our month. How beautiful the world will be if we have a gender equal world. We'll get to that very shortly. So sure. let's take you through a bit of the minister's profile. Um, Dame Pauline Chalon, OSR, PSG, started her educational studies at Sacred Heart Primary School, Shendam and got her first school leaving certificate in 1971. She holds a Bachelor's of Science Sociology from the University of Jocks. She also attended a Harvard University program for strategy public sector negotiations at the John F. N. Kennedy School of Government, Harvard University, USA. That was in 2002. 
the important talents that they have work and experience from the grassroots. Clerical officer at Shandam Local Government, that was in 1976. Clerical officer, Ministry of Local Government, Plateau State, that was in 1977. She founded the first private nursery primary school outside Jos, the Plateau State capital, um, that is Shandam Private, and served as the proprietors. Contact Lady Better Life Program, still in Shandam Local Government, that was in 1987 to 1992. Commission of Ministry of Social Development, Youth, Sports and Culture in Plateau State from 1994 to 1995. Commission of Ministry of Health, Plateau State from 1995 to 1996. Honorable Minister of State, Federal Ministry of Science and Technology, that was in 1999 to 2003. Chairman, Governing Board, Raw Materials, Research and Development Council, that was in 2005. Deputy Governor, Plateau State, from May 2007 to May 2011. She was the first deputy governor actually in northern Nigeria. National advisor for APC Women Council, National Campaign Organization in 2015 under the chairperson Mrs. Aisha Buhari, member board of trustees of the All Progressives Congress to date. That was from 2015. And you know she's a woman of different sides and it just goes to show that when a woman has held different positions, you know what she's capable of. Welcome once again, Minister. Thank you, Ruth. We have a panelist, and it should be no other person than our Women Affairs correspondent here in NTA, Momso Damon. Momso, it's always nice to have you when we're talking women matters. Thank you very much, Ruth, for having me on the program. All right. And happy International Women's Day. Okay, so you get to hear that for the whole of March. Um, Honorable Minister, it's that time of the year again. We're yes. talking women, affirmative action, gender equality, which is a fundamental human right sure. for any person, or should I say for women, not just for, for women okay. also, but if we want to look at equality, then women are always at the forefront when we're talking gender equality. Gender equality. It's another time. How do you feel that we're talking about it again? There's been a lot going on. How do you feel? Well, I feel heavy. Sorry about that. And we are struggling and we continue to face. The first of March to the last day of March is always a special month to address women issues, to look at ways and means of the contribution of women towards nation building. Sadly enough, we were hit very hard on the first of March. But thank God, as you rightly said, there is a reversal from the lower house, and I, we are praying that the same will happen at the Senate very soon, because we are praying for them. They are our children. They are our fathers, our husbands. Any country that wants to develop mm. effectively must use the greater percentage of its population. But negating the highest population means the country is disabled. But we don't want Nigeria to be disabled. We are praying and asking for a country where every human being will have a sense of belonging, every gender, the male, the female, and that's why it re resonates with this year's uh, theme. The theme of this year is gender equality to build for a sustainable future tomorrow. And break the bias. This is the song. Let's break the bias. If we want a peaceful and healthy country that will meet up with other countries of the world, we must address the issue of gender equality. You know, it is not, we're not begging for it. Yeah. It's a right, it's a fundamental human right. And God did not make a mistake by creating the woman. He created the woman to be a partner, an equal partner. He didn't create the woman to be stampeded by the man. And you know, it's beyond saying, oh, we live in a patriarchal society. No. It has gone beyond, beyond that. that. Because women all over the world yes. 
have proven to show what they can do. Mm -hmm. Just give them an opportunity. Yes. Yet, and you see it done. Mm -hmm. So now the bills we're hearing uh, focuses on indigenous ship, citizenship, and 35% affirmative action for women. Um, let's hope for a better, um, you know, process. Uh, if this is passed into law, what will it change? Of course, it will change a lot of things. Take, look at the other countries. Look at Rwanda. If you go to Rwanda, you won't believe you are in Africa because of the high percent. In fact, they are beyond 50%. Rwanda is over 60% mm. women participation. South Africa, 50, 52. Uh, Namibia, Dakar, Senegal, name it. All the African countries around us are far ahead of us. And yet we call ourselves the giant of Africa. How do you become a giant? when half of your population are not participating in the process of development. And Nigerian women, it's not that we don't have qualified women to occupy the space. We do. We have more than qualified women in all fields, in the field of business, uh, politics, the judiciary, they are already there. Every sphere, there is no any profession that when you find a woman there, she's exceptionally good. If I that brings me to the question I was going to ask, how well have women fared in the last one year, from March with last year to this very time we're talking, how well have women in Nigeria and abroad fared? Thank you, Mento. Women have fared really well last year, from last year to this year. And I must commend Mr. President. President Buhari has really lift the bar of more appointments for women, we have women in strategic positions. We have a woman now chairing the NNPC board. We have more women now as members of the board. Strategic positions, we have a woman heading the uh, Federal Character Commission. We have women in strategic positions, but it is still not Uhuru. Mm. We can do better. Yes. And if we upscale it, the better for the country. What we are saying is for the benefit of this country. If we have more population of women being involved in nation building, the more you have women on the decision table, the better for that country. Because the eyes that a mother sees things, the man doesn't see it. Exactly. And that's why God created the woman to complement the efforts of the man. If the man could have done it all alone, there would have been no need to create a woman. That's right. So fighting what if any man or anybody that doesn't believe in gender equality is fighting against the will of God, period. You know, in my next life... And that will be a terrible setback. In my next life, I will choose to be a woman. And the I same know with me. <laughs> I will, I will. Nina, because it is just special to be a woman. Yes. God took his time to create the woman. Women are special. And if only we know how special we are before the eyes of God, we will even walk with our shoulders higher than we are. So you know, it's beyond just policy making, but implementation. Mm -hmm. Even as we're seated here, we could hear from the control room, the men, it's just, I don't know if it's a natural <laughs> thing <laughs> for the men. What is that thing that the men are really afraid of? Is it that they see beyond what we're saying? <laughs> because we were having this argument earlier before this conversation. Yes. Is it that they're afraid that women will do better with all due respect to the men? Sure. Like you said, it's just to complement yes. each other. Yes. Or would you say is the women who are not showing up that they can do it? What's your take on that? Well, my take on that is Nigerian women don't even realize that the men are afraid of them. Because there is this inner gift God has given a woman that makes her stand out, that makes her look as if, now if a man comes into this room and sees three of us sitting here, he will say, wow, this room is full of women. Mm -hmm. They see three women <laughs> like that. <laughs> and that alone goes to show how special and how great we are. God has given us so many qualities in this. A woman is multitasking. I can do four or five things at the same time, effectively. A woman is cooking, she has the baby at her back, she is uh, answering calls, she is doing, 
And she's Some telling the truth. To the and man. she's attending to the man. Mm. She is, in fact, the men are our firstborns. They are the first babies of the house. They need more attention than the children. And they know it, that without the woman, the house is incomplete. Without the woman, he can never be happy. So if you know that this woman is special, she makes you happy, she, then why not give more space and let's make the world a better place and a happier place? Now, now, when you talk about breaking the bias, yes. in what areas are you are you are you focusing? What are you looking at? What in what areas are the biases? In all areas. Okay. In the fields of politics, just as we are talking about, yes. the entire population representation of women in both houses, okay. national assembly, uh, rape and senate, we are not top two. Seven percent. We are six point eight, which is a shame compared to all the other countries of the world. Secondly, you go down to the states, there are states that don't even have one female member in the House of Assembly. Mm -hmm. There are states that don't even have one woman in the local government. But things are beginning to change. I must commend our uh, governors under the able chairmanship of uh, uh, Felix uh, Kaidu, the chairman of the governor's forum, governor of the Ikiti state, and his wife, they are doing very well and they are changing the narratives. The governor of Ekiti State under his able chairmanship is bringing a lot of changes. Mm -hmm. He is one of those that, he was one of the governors that first uh, domesticated the Child's Rights Act and the Birth Act. Mm -hmm. And not only domesticating it, but ensuring the implementation. The same goes with uh, Fuara, Kaduna, many states are now coming up. And many states now, virtually almost all the states, I must comment them, are involving and giving space, appointing women as counselors, making sure that at the local government level, we have women like Sokoto. Sokoto, every local government has a minimum of three women as counselors. Okay. Eboi, we have four women as chairmen. And any local government that doesn't have a woman as a chairman, the deputy is a woman. Mm -hmm. Secretaries of local government in the, uh, all the local governments are women. That is highly commendable. We want this to move. We are asking for 35%, but 35% is not even. We're not even enough. saying 50%. We are not saying uh, for 35%. We are now asking for 50% because we deserve it and that is what we should give. But that, that boils it's down not, to We are not begging. Yes. It's, it is what we deserve. Exactly. We are not begging. It's not that we are not qualified to occupy this space. And we know that given the opportunity, women do much, much better. That is true. Because they are mothers. So that boils down to party politics. Sure. Could it be one of those things you're pushing for at the National Assembly? Sure. Let Nigerians sure. know. Yes. Starting, the starting point is even the party Expo. Expo. Yes. So what are those things you want? Okay. What we want is yes. at least to have 30 to 35 percent of women's representation at the party structure. Okay. The party administration in each of the political parties, we need to have women in the party administration, in the party offices. Okay. But where we have a party expo or the National Working Committee of the party with about 30 men and only one woman, mm -hmm. It's a national woman leading, one voice out of 30 men. What do you expect? Whatever she says, they shout her down. That's the imbalance, Honorable Minister. And if women must stand up and take their places, especially when we're talking party politics, um, how many women are even ready to participate? How many women have the capacity, I'm talking about the funding, to sponsor themselves? Now, these are some of the causes you want to address? Yes. Thank you very much. A lot of women in the last election, 2019, over 2,980 women came out, both forms, showed interest to participate. But they were denied at the party structure. They were denied at the primary level. Why? Because women are not within the party structure. Second, 
politics is a game that you can't play without men. Of course. And that's why we're talking about empowering the woman. Mm -hmm. Women need more empowerment to pa effectively participate in politics. But the greatest of all is women must love themselves, support one another. Yes. Because we have the numerical strength. Exactly. If only we realize how the men are not ready to give us space, how the men are not ready to allow us to effectively participate. The best solution is for us to work together, support one another, encourage one another, forget about the little stipends that the men will give you, maybe 1,000 rapper, some maggi and uh, salt, and maybe... Don't leave out the rice. Right. I was actually going to bring I know there's yeah. hunger in the land, people are hungry, and that is what drives them to that. But what has happened in the National Assembly? It's a very good question for women to go back to the drawing board, drawing board mm -hmm. and then see how can we can change the narrative by working together, by using our God in power. They say charity begins at home. Yes. If that must play out, what yes. about mentorship from women who have been able to stand their ground? Yes. What kind of mentorship are they passing on? Um, what kind of support in terms of empowerment are they lending out? The ministry is doing quite a lot. Civil society organizations are doing quite a lot. Our development partners, UN Women, uh, UNDP, the Canadian government, you said, all these organizations and many more are really supporting in the mentorship and then preparing women for leadership. But again, I tell you, we must sensitize our women to use our voting power. Women are the greatest voters, the women and their children, the youths. Yes. <laughs> so if women and youths must work together, we will definitely change the narrative. And we are working on that, and by the grace of God, this is a lesson that we've seen. We now know our strengths, and we know those who don't uh, want our children to be involved in decision making and contribute their quota in nation building. This thing we are talking about, amending the constitution, is not about us. It's about the future of Nigeria. It's about our children. It's about their children. I strongly believe that most of them in the National Assembly have not even realized the implication of what they have done. Because it's not about us. So many of them have wonderful, intelligent daughters mm. who will definitely tomorrow would want to ask prayer. It will fall back. And it will fall back to them. So, I feel really, really sad, but I, I can see light at the end of the tunnel. Mm. With what has happened yesterday with the reversal from the House of Representatives, I am waiting for the Senate with expectancy, mm -hmm. and I know it will happen. The Senate President and his deputy, we love them. I was in his office to decorate him as a he for she, because I've seen that. He has shown visible signs. He has told you he has more daughters. Mm. So I respect him, we love him, and we are ready to work and support him. Not only him, all the senators, the male senators in the house, we know the he for she that can support him to ensure that this bill pass. It is not about us. It is not about just today, but it's about tomorrow, mm -hmm. the future of this nation, and about our daughters who need to take their rightful place. Okay. Uh, uh, but politicians are beginning to warm up for the general elections. So I know that the majority of this population we're talking about are in the rural areas, the grassroots. And I know some time back you had reached out to all the commissioners at state level to work. I don't know, how is that relationship going? Yes. And what strategies are you putting in place? to mobilize rural women especially, because they are the ones who collect wrappers, yes. rice, and other things out of hunger. Yes. So what are you doing to ensure that this doesn't happen this year, that women stand their ground and vote those they know are going to represent their interests? Yes, thank you very much, Otto. I, yesterday, if you listened to my speech during the International Women's Day, we are going back to the drawing board. Every one of us 
everybody comes from a village. Mm -hmm. Everybody comes from the rural area. And all politics are local. Yes. We must go back and ensure that we educate our women and our youths. Women are youths. They are the ones that decide the fate of any election. We will mobilize, we'll educate, we will go back and sit with them and explain to them that it's about the future of their children, about the future of Nigeria, that we must vote wisely. What happened in 2015 mm. was a silent revolution. Mr. President did not give us any money, uh, Buhari did not give us any money to, to go around and, and share to Nigerians. But it was a campaign that we told them that it is time for us to obtain the permit. People collected money from the ruling party then and voted. Oh, there it is. in God will allow it happen again in 2023. Minister, you know, from what you're saying, these women, yes, need reorientation sure. and all of that. A lot of them need empowerment, sure. which is why they will always collect. Yes. No I doubt know. about I it. They will you. always collect. So yes. what is your ministry doing um, in terms of that um, talking about empowerment for women, especially at the grassroots. I know there's a lot of programs going on. Yes. Um, you want to share more programs? Sure. Okay. We have so many programs of empowerment, particularly to the rural community. In fact, uh, last week, yeah, Monday, Nigerian for Women Project. Nigerian for Women Project is a typical rural based program to empower rural women at the grassroots supported by the World Bank. Mm. And that is creating a huge impact. I was in Niger State last week, and we empowered over 3,098 women. Mm. And those are, so the program is not that we did it at the state level, no. The governor, his wife, in fact, the whole state executive moved to the village. It's a typical local government, uh, empowerment program for women and women were out there empowered. So we're doing it in phases. This week on the 11th, we are starting off the one of uh, Abia State, mm. the same typical rural project. And we will keep moving. Uh, next month, I'm moving to Ogun State. So we are moving round. What's the, the synergy like with the state government? Because if these programs must be um, well implemented, you yes. need that synergy, positive yes. synergy. Yes, there's very good synergy between us and the state government. And we work, we educate and prepare the women on how to train. Mm. So they go through a lot of training okay. for months by our officials before the, the, the funds are released to them. And these funds are released directly Thank into you. their account. Yes. It's not a cash that we share. Six, each woman benefits, uh, is supported with the sum of, it's a grant mm -hmm. of 60,000. And you can imagine 60,000 to a typical rural woman who sells yeah. either vegetables or fried pote or masa. That it is huge. Her life. It's huge amount. I know some empowerment program that we've done, 20,000, 20,000 we share to women that do petty trading. After six months, you come back and life is changed. So if we really want to change the economy, the economy of this country, the right place to, to, to try it is to empower women. Exactly. Because empowering the woman has a multiplier effect. When you empower the woman, you are empowering the family, you are empowering the society. Because whatever she gets, it's brought from the family. Exactly. Their needs will be well balanced. Uh, the children, she will ensure her child doesn't miss anything in school. If it is books or whatever the child needs to be in school, she will do it. 
the girl, the um, Kaidelsen girl, that misses classes one week every month because they cannot afford Tamil paper. Mm -hmm. If the mother is empowered, sure. you take the girl, you go to go. So we have programs supported by Bank of Industry. We have programs supported by uh, the, we are working closely with the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, where women are given a lot of uh, support through the SMEs. These are empowerment programs that help. But again, it's not enough. Yes. The huge number of women that are out there that need this empowerment is quite huge. And we, that's why we're asking for more. Because women have been long neglected. And neglecting them is what is costing the stagnant nature of our development process. Our country can do better, we will develop faster. If more women are empowered, if more girls are in school, if we get more educated, all these are things put together that can help the interests of national development. And that is the starting point. The women are the center of it all. Yes. They are mothers, they are wives, and when they are get, get empowered, the family, the society is completely empowered. Wow. Thank you so much, Ma. Now let's talk about uh, social based violence. The VAP Act. How many states have been able to domesticate the VAP Act? And not just domesticating it, but implementing, like you said. So, do you have any data of how many people have been prosecuted based on this VAP Act from the states? Well, the, let me start with the number of states that have so far dom domesticated the VAP Act. Mm -hmm. And I must again commend the Governor's Forum. I must commend all the speakers in the Houses of Assembly at the state level because all my advocacy when I go to the state, I reach out to the speakers in the House of Assembly because they must be the ones uh, pass the bill before the governor assign it. So I'm highly impressed so far. Mm. We have, for the VAP Act, we have 30 states that have domesticated. That's it. commendable. It's highly commendable <laughs> compared to what we used to have. Yeah. We used to have when I, when I assumed office. <laughs> the same with the Child Rights Act, so far, we have been able to uh, have 28 states mm. out of 26. So we are making progress. And the remaining states, I keep withdrawing the, uh, the names of those states. It's the, the, the remaining states for the Child's Rights Act is the Northeast and the Northwest, with the exception of Kaduna State. Right. So the Child's Rights Act is very critical okay. because the education of the girl child is very key. If we want our country to move forward, if we want to have better society, better homes, the girl child must be educated. Because an educated wife will ensure that her children are educated, will ensure that everything, she will manage the home better. Yeah. The husband will be healthier, the children will be healthier. Mm -hmm. She will support and direct everything within the home. I commend Mr. President, President Buhari is really concerned about the number of out of school children where we have girl child having the highest number. The education of the girl child in all his statements, he said the education of the girl child is top among his priorities. And it is a right, it's not a privilege, it's a right of every Nigerian child to, to be educated. School. Yes. school is key. So if we have our children go to school, then the society is brighter for all of us. But beyond the stereotypes, beyond the cultural differences that yeah. are part of the challenges affecting the um, implementation of the, it's one thing to domesticate this right, it's another thing to implement Implementation. It. So it can be domesticated and remain stagnant. That is what we are now driving home. Okay. We are appealing to them to ensure that the implementation, particularly of this VAP Act is key because the number of rapists, the number of children, small children, school children, even the boys are not fair. Yes. They are being raped on daily basis and if I give you the statistics, it's heartbreaking. And then the stati statistics of uh, those prosecuted, yes. 
is not up to 1% compared to, compared the number to number of reported cases. The reported cases. How many reported cases? The last time I was talked to <laughs> is heartbreaking. So it's it discourages those who want to come out to speak. Because if those, like we had the case of Ochanya, mm -hmm. this is years dragging and nothing has been said nothing. about it. Nothing. So many. Uh, Alifa, the most recent in Kano, who was just five years. Five year old, raped and killed, and you allow the man, and you say you're taking the man to court. For what? This man needs to be killed. You know, they back <laughs> out for that. Because for if his mother, you have raped a child, you uh, gone a, a step further to kill mm. her. But Minister, um, well, if the law provides, um, the VAC Act provides the, um, the, the rules for penalty and all of that, um, when you said um, the he should be killed, yes. a lot of people will think you're promoting don't do it that yes, way. Well, let's just leave that to the law. To the law. To the the law is clear. You will not pray or wish to see him die. However, it, he had accepted. So I don't know why this matter should drag into court. Now he's denying it. And the next thing, this chairman will be let to go free on the street? No. Honorable Minister, where do The children's parliament are not taking it easy. <laughs> the mothers are not taking it easy. We've been calming them down. Mothers should have been on the streets now. But he said, let's hold up and wait for the court of the law to take his hands. But we are not happy with this slow pace okay. of justice. Justice that I know is you were with and justice delayed is justice delayed. Right. You are with the Minister of uh, Justice all the time to yes. solicite the facilitation of these cases. What is the outcome? Well, we are still on it. Everything, you will keep pushing. We will not give up. You remember when I took the uh, memo to council, Mr. President graciously with all members of council approved it. I went to address the uh, government forum. They unanimously declared a state of emergency. Their wives form a coalition chaired by the wife of the chairperson, Bishi Ereli, yes. wife of the, the, the state governor, and we have governor's wife so committed, they call themselves governor's wife, concerned about rape and gender-based violence. And all of them are doing so well. But our problem is the dispensation of justice. That is still very slow. Again, the president has uh, in council, it was approved that the attorney general, he is the chairman of the interministerial committee. And we are appealing to the justice system to fast track all pending cases of rape and all forms of gender based violence. Even that is really destroying our own, the life psychic of our women, destroying our children, even making so many of them to lose their lives. You know, Honorable Minister, it can only be felt than imagined. The trauma, you know, these victims go, go through, through, and then you shot the life of an innocent girl yes. for life. Yes. You shot her future back. Completely. Um, beyond getting to the point of seeking justice in court, what about the process of arrest? A lot of people are even scared to come out. Um, is there anything your ministry is doing to encourage people? I know that NTA here will always promote, let's stand together against Sure, the I commend NTA for that. Well, what is the ministry doing so people, mothers, can fight for their daughters? Even if we're having a lot of cases pending, yes. let's even have the arrest. You see, we have a structure, and the ministry is doing quite a lot of advocacy in the state and in the local government. Our commissioners are doing the same. Uh, our social welfare officers, the ones in charge of the local government, are also doing. And this advocacy is not just us. Everybody, as I said, women's issues are human rights issues. Yes. We call on all well-meaning Nigerians. It's not just about women intensifying in advocacy. We need more voices of men mm. to speak and condemn rape and all forms of gender-based violence. And that's where I will commend um, the Sultan of Sokoto, who has, under his NGO, has organized two or three uh, powerful seminars. I attended one last November, 
during the celebration of the International Women's Day. He said, it is not just today, during the eighth, that uh, uh, he's celebrating women, but every day should be Women's Day because they are our mothers, they are our wives, they are our daughters. And that's what I want to hear every man to say. The current president, he is also another he or she, a very strong gender. He has said it not once or twice. He has condemned all forms of uh, violence against women. And we are advocating that more religious leaders, like it's not just, it shouldn't just end on the current president and the sultan. We appeal to all our traditional rulers, the inter-religious committee, uh, NIREC, they should speak more. Let's hear more men condemning and be vanguards or ambassadors in our community. Because when you see something, you do something. Mm. Expose the rapists. Name and shame them. Mm. It's there in the VAP law. If we implement the VAP Act, if we effectively implement it in all the states that have so far domesticated it, I tell you, the rate of rape cases and gender-based violence will drop. In fact, see what, uh, and that's why you don't blame uh, uh, the governor of uh, Kaduna State, where he even modified and added something to the VAP Act. <laughs> that again, the human rights, they will say it's against human rights. But the best way to deal with a rapist is to deal with the instrument of rape. A rapist can even rape even a hero. If you jail him for life and he sees a cleaner who is a woman in the, <laughs> in the prison yeah, or a wardress, he will rape her. So there must be drastic law uh, measures that will serve as a deterrent Surely. if we want a healthy society. Okay, we need to get there. Yes. I'm sure you need to. That brings me to the issue of the sex offenders register. There was so much excitement when, when that register was launched. And I was expecting In November that 19, 2019. Yes, ma'am. So I was expecting that by now we'll begin to see names before you could get appointment or even travel out. The computer will bring out details to know if you are a rapist or attempted or not. But I didn't know what has come of the sex offenders register. That's what I'm to say. Mm -hmm. What I just said now, I mm -hmm. said if we have the VAP Act properly implemented. Okay. Because the naming and shaming is it. The naming is part of the implementation of the VAP Act. Okay. It's there in the law. Mm -hmm. Naming and shaming. Make it started. Let us start it. But we're not there yet. And rape. Mm -hmm. Things are happening in every local community, in every local government. Maybe if you enlighten Nigerians on that sex offenders register, what's the implication for those who are intending on nursing, you know, killings of rape? I mean, what, what does it entail? Until it is implemented. Yes. Oh, that's why we are calling on states that have domesticated it. If it is implemented, if they name and shame you, yes. how is that done? Okay, there's a, uh, a board, yes. and then their names, their pictures and their names will be flagged. They will print it like posters and paste them. Oh. In strategic places, the pictures, <laughs> that this is a rapist, beware of it. You know, that was why <laughs> I asked the question. So uh, if that is done, yes. if they get, when they are raped, oh, and they must they be proven dead by the court of law. Well, Honorable Minister, that's why I asked the question. Yes. Arrest. How many arrests have been done? Oh, <laughs> thousands of arrests, but if the cases, they are mm -hmm. pending in court. That's why I'm telling you that our justice system must improve. Hmm. Okay, so <laughs> that the figures <laughs> is outrageous. Wow, this is one issue, and we have the uh, data situation room yes. that we have rapists on daily basis. This is one issue we will continue to talk about. We will, we not, will not be tired. No, no, no. <laughs> we will keep talking. We'll keep talking until, until we, we change see, their mindset. Yes, and the data situation room is that actually yielding fruit? It is yielding fruit, but our problem is implementation. Oh, I need to involve the justice them. system, yes. and then. Those at the state level, because once the justice system proven it, it's then that, that they will now declare you a rapist and your pictures will be pasted everywhere and you will be on the radio and the TV, your pictures paste. Hmm. And that is just the best way because no rapist want to be publicized. Uh, publicized. Nobody wants to be associated, associated with a rapist because and a rapist is not a stranger. 
Yes. A relative is always the closest person to the family. Exactly. It could be a member of the family. It could even be the father of the family. Yeah, the father's great. So uncle. that it could be the driver, it could be the workers in the house. Mm. They will carry the child playing and then touching their hands. That's why sex education is very important. Parents edu must educate their children, mm. tell them certain places are no go areas. If anybody touches your bum bum or touches your breast, scream. Please. And the parents have a role to play. Of course, parents are the first teacher at the, uh, in the home. Before a child is taken to school, you must educate the child and don't ever allow your children go to school with a driver alone. Mm. Mm. A relation should accompany your children to school because sometimes when you send the children to school only with the, not all drivers are good, not True. all dri drivers have the fear of God in their mind. They will corner somewhere and destroy your child. And then leaving them and alone then threaten them, that's right. Mm. And threaten them. If you say it or you tell mommy or daddy, I'll kill you. Mm. The child lives in fear. That child is destroyed for life. Honorable Minister, it's a whole lot we're contending <laughs> with so much. as women so when much. we have to, you know, be caregivers and also protect our children. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot for you also being at the hem of affairs for the women affairs issues in Nigeria. You have um, not so much of a time left. What is your roadmap? What, what would you want to see, you know, become better for Nigerian women um, before the next administration? Thank you very much, Ruth. This is very, very pertinent. My prayer is to see, by the time I leave office, to see more women into the political space, elected office, and more women in appointed office. I want to see a situation where if a woman is contesting election, I want to see all women within that community queue up to support their sister. I want to see a Nigeria where women will protect and defend one another. I want to see a Nigerian society where women will take their rightful place in the, on the decision table. It is possible we have that number, we have that critical mass, qualified women that will occupy those spaces. But we need the support of one another. When we support one another, the men can support us. We need to work with the men. We are not fighting the men. Mm -hmm. We are not in competition. That's where they get it wrong. They get it wrong. We are not in competition. God created the man as the head of the house. God created the woman to be a helpmate, to support in every sphere, not just in the home, but also in the working place. Because as I earlier mentioned, the eyes that a mother sees things, the man doesn't see it exactly. that way. And if we have more women on the decision table, better policies will be put in place for this country. Nigeria will move faster. Nigeria will compete better with other nations of the world. So we are blessed with everything. Nigeria has all that it takes to be the giant of not just Africa, but even the world. Exactly. But what is lacking is women participation. Until we have gender equality, all efforts will keep going round and round. It is not because I'm Minister of Women Affairs. I've always believed in gender equality. And I treat my children, the boys and the girls, the equally. equally at home. Mm -hmm. I have one son and four girls. My son from childhood, he does all the house chores. He can cook even better than the girls. <laughs> Which is what should be. <laughs> and he, his wife is blessed. Mm. Because the days he's not working well, or the days he cannot supervise or cook, 
Is it blessing so, every woman for his home? Yes. How will man be able to do, to, that? to do that? But I have a feeling that maybe the men are afraid of this equality we keep emphasizing, give us equal chance. So are we misconstruing this equality for something that maybe the women will feel, if I'm equal, I can go to work like you, come back, and then we share the chores even with the men. So what exactly is this equality you're talking about? Is the equality <laughs> that the men understand it and then give women a chance? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, power is not given on a platter of stone. Yes. And that's why we will keep pushing. Yes. You must struggle. And I don't believe in just giving you appointment because you are a woman. No. Okay. That's a bone of contention too. No, that we have qualified we have qualified women that can contest. We have qualified women that can occupy any space. We have qualified women in the judiciary that can uh, that can occupy the position of a chief judge. Yes. We have qualified women. Thank God we have one already I remember, yes. uh, in the um, Court of Appeal. But every agency, we have more than qualified women to occupy and be at the helm of affairs. Okay. And when we have that, in the same proportion okay. that we have men. So that's the equality. That's the equality we're talking about. It's not that... Uh, men will be uh, dis uh, equal with women. No, there are certain things. Can a man go to uh, carry a pregnancy? No, 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 no man can carry pregnancy for one minute. Okay, well, for winding nine down this, we're winding down this conversation, Honorable Minister. Yeah. What is your message to Madam Women? I know you've said a lot, and it won't be enough. Thank you very much, Grace. Uh, my message to Nigerian women, particularly as we celebrate the International Women's Month 2022, that Nigerian women, we must change the narratives by loving one another, by supporting one another, by talking well of one another. Mm -hmm. Don't pull down any woman. Yes. You try and lift up a hand. If every woman mm. that is blessed tries to lift up one woman that is down mm. and the other lifts up. Mm -hmm. Nigeria will be a better place. Indeed, and just before I let you go, Honorable Minister, yes. what is your political ambition? You're the first northern female <laughs> deputy governor, so let's have a sneak peek of that. Well, power comes from God. Okay. So I am ready any day, any time, but I put God first. My prayer every morning is Lord, let your will be done in my life. When the time comes, yes. But I'm not afraid of vying for any position. Even being the president of Nigeria. Why not? I know nothing about <laughs> Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> for now. Because but I believe that women will get there one day. Yes. And I believe now we have, my campaign to Nigerian women is that we should not vote stupidly and cheaply as we've used to be doing. Yes. Thank you very we much. We must negotiate before we vote for any man. Mm. Thank you very Thank much, Honorable Minister. Thank I you. know if I allow you, we just <laughs> keep going on. This is one woman who's very mm. passionate about Thank women you. and affairs. Exactly. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nanto. Yes, ma'am. Nanto, Damien Detu, thank you for your time again. Thank you so much for having me. It's <laughs> been a wonderful conversation talking about promoting gender equality and social inclusion for women. Well, well, gender equality is our fundamental human right, and we want to see a prosperous, peaceful, and sustainable future, then think gender equality. That's Platform. I'm Ruth Aguile. Bye.